What's up everybody, Rob Arnold here. Today, I'm gonna to be showing you how to dial in the perfect float on your Floyd Rose or any floating tremolo equipped guitar so that it's level with the body and behaving properly. We're gonna go over a few different scenarios that should cover whatever you may be dealing with, whether it's simply changing strings, readjusting your float slightly, or changing your gauge of strings and doing bigger changes with your float or changing your tuning significantly, which also has a great effect on your float. Perhaps your guitar right now has a bridge that's sitting way back like that or way forward like that, and I'm gonna show you how to fix that. Right now, this guitar is an ESP LTD Eclipse Custom, part of their 87 series, and it was shipped from the factory in E, standard E, with nine through 42 gauge strings on it. And you can see that the bridge set back into the body there. It is not perfectly level with the body like that. I'm pushing this forward to get it perfectly level. So you can see it's sitting back in there, which means the tension on the springs right here and those two screws is too great. In this situation, we'll have to relieve a little bit of tension by loosening those screws in the back, which will in turn send this bridge back up too level. Yours may look a lot worse than this. You may think, oh, that's nothing, which that isn't too bad. You could play on this, but I like to have them all perfectly level and I'm gonna show you how to do that. The first scenario is the best scenario where you're not looking to change your gauge of strings and you're not looking to change tunings. You're just either changing the strings on your guitar for the first time or the 100th time, or maybe you're not even changing strings, but your float is off or it needs a little bit of adjustment or it needs a lot of adjustment and you wanna get that flat. That is the first scenario that we're gonna go over, just a simple fix like this. From there, we're gonna pop on a higher gauge string. These here are some 13 through 56s and that's gonna have a significant effect on the float. And we'll adjust that once we put those strings on. And finally, we're gonna drop this guitar from E to drop C, which will have another significant effect on the float. So I'm gonna take you through all those scenarios and whatever your case may be, your gauges, your type of floating tremolo, or your tuning, hopefully you'll be able to apply these principles and techniques that I demonstrate today to your setup, which will hopefully in turn give you confidence to work with your Floyd Rose, regardless of what your setup may be. So the first thing we're gonna do here is get this float straight. Again, it's sitting back in the guitar and we need to get that nice and flat. I want you to try to visualize a seesaw or a teeter-totter. The center point is our bridge. If you have two bricks, one on each side of a seesaw that are in equal weight, that seesaw should float or balance just right. If you add more weight to one side, it's gonna pull that side down. If you add more weight to the other side, it's gonna pull it like this. Again, the bridge is our middle point and as we increase tension on the strings by tuning these higher, it's going to pull or put more weight on this side of the seesaw and pull it like that. If we were to tighten these screws in the back, right here on our trem claw, right here, this is the block of our bridge that has these springs attached to the trem claw. And if we tighten these screws, it adds tension to the springs, pulling the bridge back like this. If we were to loosen these screws, it would relieve tension and the bridge would go forward. So it's a giant balancing act, but the one constant is the tuning. If you know what tuning you're gonna put it in, no matter what strings you put on and no matter how your bridge looks, the tuning is the constant. So that's where we're gonna base all of our adjustments off of. In this case, E, standard E, and all of our adjustments are going to be minor as well, meticulously minor, so that we don't over or undershoot things and just get into a mess each time we make an adjustment, we have to retune again. Retune so that it's perfectly. One string at a time, from the sixth to the first, then back to the sixth, and doing it again. Because all this is a big balancing act. And every time we make any adjustment to any string, the other string tunings are gonna change. So we're gonna go six to one, again six to one, again six to one. And each time the discrepancy in the tuning being off will be less and less until it gets to where it's sitting comfortably and the bridge is settled in we have the tuning we need, the final adjustments that we've needed to make on the screws have been done, and we're good. So let's start with that. 
Again, in this case, my bridge was sitting back and we are in a nice E here. Let's double check that. Slightly sharp, slightly sharp. All of these are slightly sharp for the most part, but pretty close right on there. Always wanna make sure your nut screws are loose while doing this. All the adjustments tuning wise we're gonna be making are gonna be made from the tuning knobs, not from the fine tuners here. The fine tuners is the very last step after your guitar is floating properly, perfectly in tune, lock the nut screws up here, then we'll make our final adjustments with the fine tuners. So get them in a good halfway point, tune up to where you need to be with your tuners here, and we won't touch these till the end. So we are fairly close here. And because our bridge is set back and we want it to come this way, we could achieve that in two ways. We could either tune up, but that's not what we want to do because we need to stay in E. Remember, that's our constant. We're going for E and the adjustments we're going to make are all within the bridge. Each time we make those adjustments with the bridge, we will retune though, but we will be coming back to E. So therefore, because we're in E right now, what I need to do is loosen these screws slightly, relieving tension on the springs, which will in turn send this bridge this way. We don't want to go too much. We want to get it just right. So it's just a little bit of trial and error, actually a lot of bit of trial and error, especially with later in the video when we get into changing the gauge of strings and when we get into dropping the tuning. But this is going to be fairly easy. And like I said, the best case scenario, because it's in E, we want it to stay in E. All we need to do is loosen these screws just a bit. I'm gonna just start with a quarter turn. And because these are Phillips head screws on here, you can see it's almost like a plus sign. And so it's easy to determine a quarter turn, a half turn, three quarters of a turn, a full turn, etc. So what I'm gonna do is just a quarter turn. So I'm just gonna look at one of the, the uh, points on the plus and put it where the other one is. I'm gonna do this on both sides equally to begin with. Most of the adjustments I'm gonna be making are gonna be equal on the trem claw. Remember, this is your bass side, the lower strings. And this is the treble side, the higher strings. Now, after we make the majority of our adjustments, it might be off this way. And there is where we would make adjustments independently from the treble and the bass side. But those, again, are gonna be very minor and at the end. Until we get our float pretty much exactly how we want it, we're gonna be making equal adjustments. And then once we've reached it on the bass side, where we think the float is perfect, then we'll check the treble side. And if any adjustments need to be made on that side, we can do that independently. So I've loosened those screws slightly. And at this point, I'm gonna give this a little bit there, wake it up. I'm gonna do that every single time after I make an adjustment. Because those screws, just think of it, it's metal in wood and wood isn't, you know, completely hard. It, it has some give to it, like a house settling. Those screws and the threads on those screws now want to settle into their new spot in the wood in the body cavity there. It's very minor, but like I said, everything is meticulous in here. Now I'm going to give it a retune to E. And it makes sense that the guitar is dropped in tuning because we loosen tension from the springs, therefore dropping the tuning, and now I'm having to tune up. Back to E. Okay, see I went six to one, got them in tune. Now I get back to six and it's still low. That's why I said every single time, we're gonna go six to one, six to one, six to one, over and over again. And each time the discrepancy in tuning will get less and less. Discrepancy is also more prevalent on the bass strings, the lower strings. Okay, it's in E there. And now let's take a look at our float. Still got a little ways to go. As you can see there, it's not 100% level. And again, what we're looking at here, the edge of the bridge here, we want to be 100% level with the body. The body is our constant there. So you can see in the back, it's dipping down slightly. 
this side is lower than this. So I'm gonna give it the tiniest bit, maybe an eighth of a turn, continuing to loosen there to hopefully bring this up to perfect. This is a tedious process because it's just a lot of the same over and over again. Remember to wake up that bridge in its new spot there. Let's take a look. I, which I am meticulous, I would say that the back is actually a little too high now. So I'm gonna make an adjustment. I went a tiny bit too far. So I'm gonna tighten the screw just slightly. I like it. Looks perfectly level to me. And our guitar is in perfect E, so we're good to go. Again, that was very easy and only required minor adjustments. Now, this next step, I'm gonna put on these heavier gauge strings here, D'Addario New York XLs, 13 through 56, which is what the owner of this guitar wanted on here. And then we're gonna drop it to drop C. But first, I'm just going to restring it, not making any adjustments whatsoever, so we can see what kind of effect that it has on the bridge to stay, stay in E and to put heavier gauge strings on. So I'm going to do that real quick, and uh, I'll see you in a second. Okay, so we're back. I have the D'Addario 13 through 56 on here. And by the way, if you're interested in seeing my string changing methods for fixed bridges, Floyd's, things like intonation, changing strings on an acoustic, anything like that, please check out my guitar maintenance tutorial series called the String Changing Series. You can find those videos in the description below. Um, so anyways, take a look at this. As I expected, the bridge is way forward, which maybe is how some of your guys' guitars are looking and why you're watching this video. But look at that. And that was only after I put on three strings, just the sixth, the fifth, and the fourth there, uh, you know, and tried to get them up to E. It pulled it up that much, and that's because a lot of additional tension is required for thicker gauge strings. So I knew it was going to pull forward like that. If I had to put lower gauge strings on, it would have sunk back because there's less tension on the strings. And you could think of it like this. If you took a strand of hair and tried to break it apart, it'd break apart pretty easily. But if you took a big rope and tried to pull that apart, it would take a lot more tension to pull that apart. So thicker gauge strings require more tension. Thinner gauge strings require less tension. Again, so this is what happens when I just change gauges. But if I wanted to maintain E here, I would need to tighten the heck out of these springs back here, probably almost all the way into the body cavity, which would in turn pull this back to float. I can't even pull it back right now because there's so much tension on the springs to have it in E. So I don't recommend having a high gauge string on here for E. Um, I just re recommend it for lower tunings, which is good because what we're gonna do now is put this guitar in drop C, which is my tuning of choice. Uh, the one I like the best, but I certainly play a lot in E as well, different tunings, drop D, C standard, even drop A on a seven string. So in this case, you would maintain lighter strings if you were gonna play in E. But let's drop it to C. So I didn't even tune it back up to E because I couldn't, like I said, I could only make it to three strings right here until it kind of, got to its, the point where it can't go anymore. Um, one thing too is that sometimes guys will say, I've tight, I've put these in all the way they can go, 
I have no, no more turns to be able to turn him in, but my bridge is still stuck up like this. What do I do? And in th those scenarios, I say, well, there's some combination of something going on that your guitar just doesn't like, but you can always add a fourth spring, which would in turn put more pressure back here, apply more tension, I'm sorry. So you, you could move these, reconfigure these to add a fourth spring. And this guitar even came with a, an extra spring in the case. So they were, you know, the manufacturers are aware that that's a scenario that may occur. Um, so just know that you can always add more tension by adding a fourth spring back in there. But hopefully we're not going to get to any scenario like that that requires another spring. So what I need to do here is I need to start tightening these screws to pull this guy down. Now, this is in almost up into E right now, so I would be fighting it quite a bit. So what I can do is I can drop this. We're basically gonna have to start from scratch here because it's such a significant change. And watch this. As I lower the tuning, you'll see this guy start to drop, which he already kind of has. just to get us to a place. Look how that dropped down there, okay? So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to tighten the screws. I'm gonna just pick something like, something I think maybe three big turns on each side equally. I'm gonna start like that and see what happens. Okay, that may be too much, but that's the thing, you don't know. It's just a lot of trial and error. There probably is some sort of tool or mathematical measures that you can take. Um, you know, the scientific method to this, but I don't know it. I've just been doing it for 20 years like this by feel. So I tighten those in, which I know I needed to do. Now let's try to get this into drop C, C, G, C, F, A, D, low to high, and see where that sits. Remember, the tuning is our constant. So once we get the tuning right, We'll see what adjustments need to be made to this bridge, and it'll be a balancing act then of tightening, the, or loosening the screws, retuning, tightening and loosening the screws a little bit less, retuning, tightening and loosening the screws a little bit less, retuning, and each time we tune, it'll get a little bit better until we maintain that perfect float. Six to one, now six to one again. You'll see this will be way less than C. Also, these strings have been pre-stretched after I put them on, and while I was putting them on, I stretched them out a ton so that a lot of the stretching, the natural stretching that happens with them doesn't happen while we're trying to adjust the float. Again, I talk a lot about stretching, the importance of that, and how to do it in some of my string changing videos. So at this point, I'm still a long ways off. I'm closer, I'm closer to CGC FAD, which is drop C. And look at that. Totally crazy. Sticking up there. So we need to tighten those screws a ton more. And to make it a little easier for myself, I'm gonna detune. Because I know we're not even in the ballpark yet. Quite a bit of adjustments still need to be made. Okay, so I've tightened again. Tried to tune again, and we're still at a tremendous discrepancy, which means that we need to keep screwing in quite a bit or even add another spring. I think we may do that. I think we may add another spring. Right now, I can tell that it's gonna be quite a bit to get these guys in. 
So to add another spring, I'm gonna loosen all these tuners. So watching out for this little cable here, the ground wire. I'm going to just move this guy over one position. Move this guy over, see how I did that? Moved it from there to there. So I'm gonna move this guy over. Sometimes it's easier with a tool, which I'm going to go grab. Okay, so we got the three like that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna move this one here and add a fourth one right there so that there's even distribution across. There we go. So I'm glad actually that we got to show this example, adding a fourth spring. Again, that was just in the bag that came with this guitar. Yours may as well, and if not, I'm sure you can order them from Guitar Center or Sweetwater or something. Let's just see what happens with that fourth string when we try to go up to C. Look at this, we're getting closer. Nice float, and the tuning is, is not even near perfect yet, but we just know that adding that fourth spring was just what the doctor ordered. It added the additional amount of tension to get us in the ballpark, which we are currently in. So as you can see, while the process is tedious, adjusting, tuning, adjusting, tuning, reacting, it's all necessary, and my movements are thought out, with the whole big picture in mind of the teeter-totter. So you can see here, my discrepancy is getting less every time, as I said, which means the bridge is closer to where its final resting place wants to be. I guarantee we're still gonna need to make adjustments unless we get lucky here. But um, okay, so it's starting to rise slightly and I still need to go, which means I still need to make a couple turns tightening in the back, but we're actually pretty darn close. It's not gonna take much from here. Let's see what a full turn does for us. Man, this one's tough. You really want to be careful not to strip these. So I'm pushing in and turning as hard as I physically can because I don't want to strip the, that screw head, which is already beginning to slightly. If it was stripped out, take everything apart replace the screw. You just want to, you just got to hope that it isn't stripped so much that you can't take it out. In that case, you need to use pliers and really try to work it. So it's just important not to strip it. Okay, now we're in a spot, which is good. We're detuning now. The bridge is up this way, but we're detuning, relieving pressure from the strings, which is gonna send it back. We may have gone a little too far with that last adjustment on the screws, but that's normal. We're getting closer to a place where we can dial it in. Oh man, it's almost there. It's almost money, but the thing is, is that over time, it's gonna continue to settle. So I recommend getting it as absolutely close as possible and waiting an hour or so, coming back and fiddling with it again. Because you may think you have it perfect, and then you go to bed for the night or whatever, you come back in the morning, and it isn't how you left it. That's because things are settling. Bridge is settling into the position it wants to be in and may require small further adjustments. All right, our tuning is money. Let's take a look at our float there. Sticking up towards the string slightly. It's pretty darn close. So it might need just a slight tightening of the screws. So my other side is up slightly as well. See that? 
So we need to tighten a tiny bit more, just a touch. So we are looking super money, guys. Check out this tuning. Tuning's perfect drop C. And our float is feeling good as hell. Super level. Just the way we like it. Looks that way on the other side as well. absolutely perfect and the tuning is perfect and so it worked just took some finagling and we are good to go so what i do now is i'd let this sit for at least an hour or so let it marinate if you will maybe even overnight. I'd come back, retune, make any final adjustments with the screws that I need to. And at this point, they'd be just hair turns, if anything. Always give it a let good go like that too, to let it settle in. Then I would tighten my, my nut screws here, fine tune, pop my back plate back on, which there we'll get another look at that. Looks pretty good with the four, with the four uh, springs in there. Pop my back plate on, tune again. And then I would, my final adjustments would be intonation and truss rod. It's got a nice relief in the neck as it is. And I would check my intonation. Again, I have an intonation video which can show you how to adjust the intonation. It's kind of difficult on a Floyd, but you can do it. And um, my video can help you do that. So, uh, you know, a big change like this, new string gauge, and a significantly different tuning. You definitely want to check your intonation. Yep, a little bit off. So we'll get that going, but I hope this was helpful for you guys. I know that Floyd Roses are intimidating and can be daunting and you run into these problems. Like you just wanted to put a new set of strings on and all of a sudden your bridge is like that or that. And you're like, what the hell? So um, hope this was helpful for you guys. Again, make sure you check out the other videos in my tutorial series. Again, I'm Rob Arnold. My channel has a lot to offer. So check that out, please. Make sure you're subscribed for upcoming videos. If you got anything out of this, please give it a thumbs up for me. And uh, hope to see you guys on the next one. Cheers.